Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors, I'm Erica. On today's video, we are going to be doing the next letter in our How I Color Alphabet series. This is G is for glass. Um, this is another one that I tend to avoid if I can. Uh, I don't know why. It's not a hard thing to do. I just tend to not color images with glass in them. And I did find a few examples, um, but <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a little um, a little surprising how little I have colored glass. So, um, with that being said, let me show you a few of the examples that I have. Um, the biggest thing to remember about glass is the highlights, and that's that's the top thing that that you really have to think about when you're doing it. So, on this one. This is the glass that I have colored. Um, it's just a typical bottle. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't really know <laughs> what to say. So this is a see-through bottle. I do have another picture um, here in a minute that is a solid bottle. So we'll see kind of the difference in the way I approach those. Um, but I was really happy with the way that one turned out when I did it. Um, the next one, I think, is this page. Um, and this has really subtle highlights. So this is this is all not clear. Like these two, I think I said were like glass bottles, and this one was not a glass one, so there's not really any highlights. There's just like different tones and stuff on it. Um, the highlights on this are so subtle, you can't hardly see them. So it's right in the corners here. Um, along the edge there and then some dots here and there and lines um, in the center so it's a very subtle very subtle highlight on those ones um, let's see another one that I have is this one and again the highlights are just I just did um, the highlight where um, Hannah Carlson had drawn them in already and I just went over it with a white Posca. I didn't add anything else. Um, so yeah, so there's that one. And then the last one that I found is in Johanna Basford's Christmas and it's this snow globe. And I'm not even sure how much that'll show up. Like if I think if I tilt it like this, you guys can see it a little bit better. But there's a highlight here and here. And to get that, I used um, a Posca and um, white gouache. So um, we're going to get into kind of some of the tools that I use to make my highlights and some of the, the tips that I have to kind of remembering, you know, if you want it to be see-through, you know, all of that stuff. So let me get my stuff together <laughs> and we will get started. When you, you should be able to find pretty much any shape of glass that you are looking to color online. So, I mean, I was able to find all of these relatively quickly and you can use these as your reference for, you know, even if your bottle's not gonna be green, this is gonna kind of give you an idea of where the highlight would be for your, um, your colored bottle. If you have a round bottle, this is kind of a good idea of where to place some of your highlights. And then like these jars here, um, again, you're gonna have your highlights right there. Um, and then like if you have stemware, some kind of glass or something, um, this helps to show, you know, if you have a clear stem, then it kind of shows you where some of the, um, the highlights and colors and stuff would be too. Um, so these are just a few of the images I found. You can, there are so many, like I said, so many available, and that is really your best um, bet when you are trying to figure out where to put your colors. Um, that being said, I do not color glass realistically. This is 100% um, what is the easiest way for me to make this object actually appear to be glass. So um, I saw, I don't know how many tutorials online where it was like actual glass, like realistic glass tutorials, and that's not me. So 
I probably should have started this video off with that. And this is just basically my way to make the object appear to be glass. So that being said, these are some of the um, things that I will use to add my highlights in. Um, number one is typically my Posca. I use a 1M Posca and um, I love these. On occasion, I will use my Arteza gel pen or the Jelly Roll White. Um, these, neither of these has been cooperating with me lately, so they're in a timeout normally. Well, not normally, but temporarily. Then I also use um, white acrylic paint, and sometimes I'll use gouache as well. So um, these are nice when you really need uh, a very opaque um, highlight, something that's really going to stand out against the background. Um, I found that these two work best. So, okay, let me set these to the side and we'll get started with our first page. Okay, so the first one I want to do is in Magical Dawn, and this one already has the inside done. Um, so we are going to, I'm just going to add in um, some Posca. And this is really nice because all you have to do is on Hannah Carlson's, a lot of the times, she just draws in the highlights for you. So all I'm going to do is go over where the highlights are, and then I will probably go around the outside um, edge of the glass as well. And that just kind of, uh, I don't know, it creates... Um, I don't know. It just makes it look, <laughs> it just makes it look better to me. I don't really know what it creates. Like I said, I'm not an artist. This is just kind of my gut feeling when it comes to glass. So I am going to, um, speed that up because it's not anything that's really detailed, but I'll let you guys see that as I do it. Okay, the other thing that I will probably do on this um, right in here, I'm going to add in a little bit of a line here where the cork would continue. Um, I did also, because this was not drawn in down here, I did continue the line work around the side here. Um, when you want something to be completely see-through, the best way to do that is to use a very fine tip pen and make sure you don't go right to the edge. So if you can see on this part here, I didn't draw the line all the way down. I just did a, it's like a hint of a line. It's like hinting that that, that item is continuing through the glass. And the same thing over here is I continue, I hinted that that pattern was still through the glass. Um, and because there is a little bit of color inside this glass and inside this glass, they kind of mix there. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cold gray, a, a lightish cold gray. It can be any, any gray, really. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow um, just on the inside of the white lines. 
And what this does is because this part of the glass is thicker, it's going to reflect the light differently. So that just kind of gives the illusion that, that it's reflecting the glass there. Um, the other thing that you could do if you really want to is you can go through and you can add more highlights than what um, the artist has already drawn in, which I think I'm going to do. And to do that, I'm going to use some paint. So I'm basically just going to use my handy dandy palette. It's super high tech. <laughs> and on this one, I think I'm just going to use some acrylic paint. So I've got this really inexpensive apple, apple barrel paint, which is, I don't know, like 40 cents at the store. Uh, and then I'm going to grab a brush this one. Um, and then I'm just going to grab a little bit of paint. And basically I'm just going to paint in where I want the highlight. So this is what always gets me a little bit um, nervous because I have done the entire back or the entire, you know, not the entire, but the majority of the inside of this um, glass dome already. But I want the highlight to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to start here and bring the highlight around this way. Now this is what I did when I used, when I did the, um, my snow globe. I used the acrylic paint. And you want to use something that is going to be opaque enough to cover up what's underneath so that it actually does look like a highlight. I want this to continue all the way down. Okay, so I'm just gonna darken that up. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker up here. And then kind of curve around all the way down. Okay, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more to this side, and I'm just going to do a straight line down here. I'm not going to curve it really, and it's not going all the way down as far as the other side. And sometimes if you um, make the the highlight kind of taper off it looks it looks good too okay so there's that one um i might do another little one right here right at the top of that yeah i guess that's okay uh, and then on this one i think i'm just going to go over where this one was and do that there. And this is just accenting the one that was already drawn in for me. I'm gonna add a little bit more on this side. All right. Yeah, so that's it. I am, <laughs> like I said, it's not, it's not rocket science for me for sure. Um, and then, you know, once you, if you add in the background or shadows or, you know, whatever it is that you're going to add in, I might actually finish this up really quick because there's only a few more things that I need to do in this. So I think that I will finish this up and show you guys kind of what it looks like all finished. Hang on just a sec. Okay, so there is the finished, the finished page. Um, I think it looks better once you have all the details in there. Um, but you can really see the highlight and like I said, it's not anything super fancy. It's just kind of a white, a white stripe. So this is, um, what it would be for clear glass. Um, next we'll do a, um, a colored glass and, um, yeah. And then we'll, we'll go from there. 
Okay, the next page that we're gonna work on is in Romantic Country, The Third Tale, and I found this lovely page full of bottles. Um, I have seen some people do this, and it's just like crazy awesome good. Um, we are going to um, try a few of these and see how we do. I am going to pick out some colors for a couple of these bottles and then we will get started. Okay, so the two bottles that I wanna work on right now are these two. And when I do um, colored glass, I usually pick a light color. Um, and then if it's filled with something inside, I will add that color a little bit darker. And the other thing that I will sometimes do is I will, I will anticipate where a highlight might be. So I might just kind of leave an area, um, oops, leave an area free of color, like sketch out where I want the highlight to be, and then just make sure I don't put color in that. And I try not to go all the way to the edge if I can help it, but with the way that this bottle is, it's already kind of drawn out so that we can, um, so it looks like that it's glass because the, the liquid is set inside of that glass line. Um, and again, I'm gonna, on this one, I think I'm just gonna go all the way across. Okay. Um, and then this, I will go ahead and add in color. I'm leaving a little bit of a highlight in the middle there. And then on this one, I'm just gonna color it straight all the way through. Okay, now I've got a little bit darker color um, this is the apple green, and I think that I'm going to color the potion in here this color. And I'm going to make it a little swirly. So I'm going to leave different sections lighter. The whole top part will be dark. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Color that all in with the light green. Then I'm going to use a darker green. Where is it? This is Prussian green. And again, I'm going to kind of follow that swirly pattern I put in and just kind of add in a little bit of that darker green. This is just making it look a little swirly, a little magical. And again, come in with that. What is that one? Chartreuse, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm also going to use this apple green anywhere where I think a shadow would be. So there's gonna be a shadow underneath this vine. There's gonna be a shadow underneath in areas where glass pieces overlap. And then in the corners here, I'm gonna make this a little bit darker. And then at the bottom. Okay. So I'm gonna blend that back out with that chartreuse color again.
Okay. All right, there is the cute little magical potion thing. I might add some more green in, some of this darker green in here again. Swirl this color around. Could probably add in some I did some black, just so you can tell that it's really <laughs> not good for you. All right, I'm gonna go back over with the green. I think what I might also do is take this apple green as well and go along the edge. I'm going to try to stay um, a little apart from the um, side of the bottle, but I do want to give it a little bit more um, color. And I don't know if you can see if that really does a whole lot for you guys as far as it just to me it looks like it maybe um, that the glass is definitely green now instead of just that weird yellowy color. Okay, uh, let me do this vine really quick and I'm going to do a little bit of this skull. I don't want to do too much of the skull though. I'm going to color him in white. Okay, I'm going to do the vine. Um, a couple of the people that I have seen that do glass ridiculously well, um, Chris Chang, of course. I will link these videos below in case you are interested in watching any of them. Um, Alina, coloring with Alina. I don't know what her um, she doesn't list her whole name, so it's that's just the YouTube channel. And I'm sure there are others, but those are the two that are off the top of my head that if I had to watch, you know. Hey, how do I get how do I get this look? That's that's who I would uh, go gravitate towards. Um, okay, let me get this little guy almost done. Okay, and then I'm just going to actually. I want this part up here to be black. Okay, now um, since this is a smaller thing, you don't really have to worry as much about the, um, the highlights. So I've got a highlight actually drawn in here, so I'm just gonna go right over top of where I had that drawn in. I am going to add a little bit of highlights to the center of this. I'm going to add just a little bit of a line right here on those parts. Um, I think I am going to outline this. Ok 
Okay, so there's that, that cute little potion uh, bottle. I am going to do this one as well. This one I'm gonna do in shades of pink, but I'm gonna speed that up so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, it'll be the same kind of um, process as I did on this one. I'm gonna do a lighter tone um, pink for the actual bottle. I will make the potion a little swirly and um, yeah, and then and then I'll show you and then probably do a, a little bit of a white outline and um, add in the highlights. Okay, so there are a couple of different ways to do that. Um, I am going to show you another um, page in this same book. I need to zoom back out though. Hang on just a sec. Okay, so this is one that I thought would be a good idea to color because these are going to be clear jars. Um, pretty much, right? So I'm going to do, I'm gonna color in these peas really quick and then I'll show you kind of how I would attempt to do the background of this jar. Okay, so here are my jar of peas. Um, and so this is my approach when I, it is a clear glass with no background. So this is just clear, like clear with white behind it. Um, and I typically, gravitate towards blues to do a little bit of shadows and then of course I will put in some white highlight with the Posca as well um, but I wanted to show you a little bit of the shading that I would do with these guys and then um, yeah and then we'll go from there I've got a, my white Prisma as well so um, your darkest colors are going to be in the areas that have, that are the densest, if that makes sense. Um, so this this part down here is a pretty thick piece of glass. So the areas around the outside are gonna have some shadows. Um, this area right in here is gonna have a little bit of shadow the way that the light is passing through it just kind of makes that area a little bit darker. Okay, and then also underneath this lid, it's gonna be a little bit darker. And where the glass kind of um, curves in, so where it curves in right there and there, that because it's making, I wish I could explain this better. <laughs> I feel like I'm tripping over my words so much, but um, anytime the glass changes, it's gonna change the way the light is reflecting through it. So you're going to get a different tone or a different value 
I guess, probably is the right word, a different value of color that sh that's inside of there. Okay, so I am going to extend this. Um, so I used the, the two colors I'm using, I don't think I said actually, are blue slate and powder blue. Um, and the blue slate is going to be my dark color. And the powder blue is just going to extend outward from there. I don't want the whole jar to appear blue. So I'm just um, adding hints of blue. Okay, so that's probably all I would do at the top, actually. And then down here, I would probably continue it up just a little bit. And I'm not going all the way to the edge of the jar either. That's the other thing that I forgot to mention. Um, and this side and this side are going to have a little bit of blue color. Uh, I don't know if I want to add in, I might add in just a little bit of blue slate right at the bottom. And you'll notice that I am not touching any of the lines. So none of the outside lines um, and the inside lines either. Except for right up at the top where there's a shadow right there. Um, you can do this same technique with any color that you want. You can use um, grays. You can use light purples, light pinks, light turquoise light greens, anything that you want. I typically use blue because when you have a glass jar in front of a white um, a white background, for some reason, I, I don't know, I just see, I see a lot of blue, but um, I think, uh, oops, I thought I was sharpening that. I see a lot of blue, but a lot of people will see gray or purple or something like that. And if you watch um, like a, the realistic tutorials that like glass realistically, they use all kinds of colors. So this is just like I said, this is the basic, um, easiest, give the appearance of glass type way to color glass. <laughs> so now I'm going to use my white and I'm just going to blend that out as best I can with the white. You don't want to have any harsh lines and you want things to blur out pretty, pretty good. Okay. Got that. Okay. Keep blending in here. I might add a little bit more color to the bottom. a little bit more. I want this back edge to have a little bit more color. Blend that back out a little bit. A little bit of blue underneath the beans where they're touching. Okay. All right. And now comes the part where you decide if you want to add in if you want to make the jar, if you, sorry, goodness, I cannot talk today. If you want to white out the lines, you could do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and white out my lines. You wouldn't have to. You could totally leave it like this, add a highlight. You'd be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and white out my lines. And then I'm also going to add in the highlight. And I will talk to you guys again in a second. So there we go. That is my jar. And um, 
it's really hard to see the white highlights, I know. And if you do want something brighter, you can always go back in with, let's see, let's see if my gel pen will work here. And it's there. Um, the other thing that you can always do is, and this is something that I've seen uh, people do that I, I have not taken the initiative to do myself because it makes me very nervous. Um, but you can go along the edge of your highlight. Um, to give it a little bit of definition. Um, I did a couple this way, so I'm going to see if I can get those in. Yeah, you can't really see that part, but anyway, you get the gist. So there we go. <laughs> Okay, last one is going to be in Midnight Masquerade, and there are some really pretty ones in here that have glass. Um, specifically, I want to color this glass. Um, now, I've got an ice cream dish that that's, could be clear glass. I've got a bottle full of some bubbly and another little fun thing that has clear liquid or has a see-through into the liquid here, um, but I really wanted to focus on this glass. So... Um, I do want to have it be uh, margarita-ish. <laughs> so I, I have the same colors that I used earlier on that magic potion. So we'll see if I can get something similar to that here. Um, I'm going to make this a lime, I believe. Uh, and then... We'll do the, I want the glass to be clear. That's the thing that I really want to focus on. So I'm going to go through and color in a few of these items and then we can focus on the glass. So I will be right back with you. All right, I got the drink colored in uh, and a couple of the little things around that. So I'm going to take my white um, Posca and I'm actually going to outline ice cubes um, so the other thing that I have done so I was using let's see I basically used these three colors I used the yellow chartreuse uh, chartreuse and the apple green and I went over um, the outline of the glass here with a little bit of this yellow just along the edge to kind of make it a little more, so it's reflecting the color that's inside the glass. And um, now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cool gray which I have, I have a 50. I think I need something a little bit lighter. I'm gonna try the 30 and see how that does. But I'm going to, so I'm looking at a reference photo. So I've got this reference photo here and I'm going to darken up part of the stem and then I'm gonna outline everything and add the highlight in. I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna take this section over here and I'm gonna add it, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker so that that part would be kind of like the see-through part or the part that is, um, yeah, that you're seeing what's behind it. Now, this would change depending on what your background looks like. So if this background ends up being, you know, bright and pink or whatever, I'm probably gonna have to come in here and change the the way that I've added this darkness in. But because I'm going pretty lightly here, it's not gonna, that's not gonna be a huge deal. And then I am gonna come in and add in another 
straight down this side and a little one there and a little one there. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I can do is I could do that in the corners here. And I'm not touching the edge. This is just at the, um, in between those two lines there. And then at the bottom of the glass, that's going to have a lot of that color as well. So we're going to try that and see how that goes. I'm going to use my white to blend this out a little bit. Okay, the other thing that I can do is I can add in a little bit more of this yellowy chartreuse color into some of the highlighted areas because it's gonna be reflecting um, a bit of that color from the drink. Okay, and then my last step is gonna to be to outline and I'm probably gonna add some fun um, salt to the rim. So let me, um, I'm gonna outline and I'll be right back with you guys. So there we go. That is my glass. Um, looks all right. It's not my favorite, but it's not terrible for sure. I'm going to add in a little bit more bubbles to my drink. And then to get the salt, I'm just going to do some circular with the Posca. I have no idea if that's going to look like. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. So this is not, like I said, this is not the artist's version of uh, how to color glass. Um, this is Erica's fast and, and easy glass-ish <laughs> <laughs> tutorials. Um, so we did that one there. We did these two jars and then the lovely jar of peas. We did, what was the other one we did? It was this one. Yeah. So yeah, so I hope that, um, I hope that helped. I really do. I hope it helped in, in, in some way. Um, and, and kind of gave you an idea, you know, you don't have to have it be photorealistic. If you want to do it photorealistic, like I said, there's tons of tutorials online and just be prepared to use like 50 pencils per, <laughs> per glass image. Um, yeah, so this is, this is my quick and easy way to, to get it done. Okay, so uh, I think that's it for today. The next letter is H, and H is for house. So we are going to be, I'll be working on houses in the next video. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed that today. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.